Hello, let's do some math for fun. Here's a system of equations for you guys. And this question is actually from the 2015 Math Olympia question in Germany. And this is just the first question, so it should be somewhat manageable. But we do have the third power right here and right there. So I don't know. But anyway, as always, please pause the video and try this first. Like my new mic? Don't worry, Xiao Tutu is still here. She is just an audience for this one. Yeah. Anyway. Here we go. I don't think it's a good idea for us to do any substitution right now because that might end up to be pretty horrible afterwards. So let's not do that. Um, hmm. Well, let's make some observations. First, we notice that here we have x to the third power, and this is y to the third power. And here we have x squared, y to the first. And here we have x to the first, y to the second. Well, if we focus on the pattern of the powers, that should remind us of the what? a plus b to the third power. The expansion for that, right? And let me just write that down right here for you guys. Suppose we have the a plus b to the third power. We can use the binomial theorem. We can just use the Pascal's triangle. Or you can just write this down three times and multiply it out. Up to you. But anyway, we will end up with a to the third power plus 3. That's the coefficient. And then a to the second power. The power goes down by 1 b to the first, the b starts to show up. And then plus 3a to the first, b to the second, and lastly plus b to the third power, like this. So you can see that the powers, they do match. However though, here we have 9, but this is a 3. So what can we do? Well, everybody knows 3 times 3 is equal to 9. But I know 9 is the same as 3 times 3. So maybe I will just write a 3 right here and pair up with the 3y right here. That's okay. I'm not going to you know, write 3 as square root of 3 and enter that with the x squared. That study overkill. But anyway, have a look though. If we have x plus 3y and then raised to a third power, now let's work this out. First thing to a third power, we have x to a third power. Next, we have to have 3 times this square, which is 3x squared, times this to a first power. And you see, 3 times 3 is the 9, and we have the x squared times y. Good, huh? And then we add 3 times this, and then times this square, which is 9. So we have 3 times 9, which is 27x, and y also has to be squared. Ah, very good, huh? Lastly, take the 3y and raise that to a third power. We get precisely 27y to the third power. Huh, this right here. Aha, have a look right here. If we multiply the second equation by 27, we can complete the cube. So cool, isn't it? And we will definitely do that. Multiply everybody here by 27. All right, have a look. The first equation states the same. Let me just write it down again. x to the third power plus 9x squared y, that's equal to 10. For the second equation, we have 27x to, sorry, y to the third power plus 27xy squared, this is the third power, that's equal to 27 times 2, which is 54. Well, I show you guys the work already right here. You see, if we add on everything right here, the left hand side will just be nicely equal to this, right? So I'm just going to write the whole thing as x plus 3y and then raised to the third power. And on the right hand side, 10 plus 54 is 64. And I forgot to tell you guys that we are just looking for the real solutions to this system of equations, right? Okay, so in that case, we can just nicely take the cube root on both sides, and because we're just looking for the real solutions, we just have to worry about x plus 3y being equal to 4, right? The cube root of 64. Now, we are in business because we can just move this to the other side, and that's much easier to handle compared to the original equation. We know x is equal to 4 minus 3y now, and I will just plug in this into whatever equation, but I don't want to multiply this out, so I will just plug in this right here for the second equation. Alright, so I think we are making a very good progress, and hopefully we can get the points for this question. 
So plugging this into the second equation, we are looking at y to the third power plus x being that, which is 4 minus 3y, and then times y to the second power, that's equal to 2. Well, let's do this a little bit in our head. y to the third power, and this is minus y to the third power, so all in all we have negative 2y to the third power, and this times this, which is plus 4y squared, and let me also move the 2 to the other side, which is minus 2, like this. Yeah? And then we can divide everybody by negative 2, so this is y to the third power minus 2y squared plus 1, that's equal to 0. <sighs> This is not quadratic, this is a cubic equation, but it's okay because we can first just guess and check and we can pretty much see that y is equal to 0, it's a solution. So I'll just say, note, y equals, I mean y is equal to 1, it's a solution, right? It is a solution. So again, you can just put on 1 minus 2 plus 1 is 0, so that's what I mean. And because y is equal to 0, it's a solution, that means we can factor this as some x mi uh, y minus 1 times something else, and that should be equal to 0 right here. Well, what's this though? Let's do the synthetic division. So I'm looking at this right here, and I'm going to use a blue pen. Well, what we do is you can draw a little, uh, like a little corner right here. Write down the coefficient right here, which is 1, and then negative 2, and then we don't have y to the first power, so I will put on 0, just like a place value, you have to have that. Lastly, we have the 1. And then, right here, because y is equal to 1, what you do is, you can just write that down right here. And then what you do is, first you bring this down, which is 1, and then you multiply this and that, and you put it here, which is 1. And you are just going to add it. So, when you add it, uh, you get negative 1, right? Yes, and then you do this times this, which is negative 1. E, let me just write this down right here. Do this times this is negative 1, 0 plus negative 1 is negative 1. Lastly, you put this times that, which is negative 1, and 1 plus negative 1 is 0. And the, the way you read this right here, this is the remainder. Remainder. Remainder, right? Remember that this is the remainder. And originally, you have y to the third power. Based on this, this right here is the coefficient of y to the second power. So right here, we have 1 y to the second power, and then minus y to the first power, and then this is the constant term, and it has no remainder. So that's pretty much what we have. So that's the synthetic division. I'm not sure if this is the popular method or not, but uh, it's a pretty good method. Yeah. All right. So... Once we have this, we know y is equal to 1, that solves this. In the meantime, we just have to solve that. So, to solve y squared minus y minus 1 is equal to 0, we can use the quadratic formula. y is equal to negative b, which is negative negative 1, which is just positive 1, and then we plus minus square root. Negative 1 squared is 1, minus... 4 times this and that, which is going to be plus 4 now. 1 plus 4 is 5, and oh man, we end up with a golden ratio, huh? All over 1 times that, which is 2, like that. So we have the three y values already, which is very, very nice. Yeah, the first y, and then the second y, and also the third y value. And if you would like, you can also make the graph for the equations. I know I don't know why I erased the whole equation, but uh, anyway. <laughs> I do know that this is equal to x, right? So remember that x is equal to 4 minus 3y. 3y, perhaps I'll just put on the y in blue. Like, why do I want to do that? No, I'm black and red pencil, put on y right here. Yeah. All right, so based on this, of course, we can just put on 1 into y. So when y is equal to 1, let's see, how should I write it? When y is equal to 1, x it's equal to 4 minus 1, no, 4 minus 3 times 1, which is just equal to 1. Yeah? Yes. Next, when y is equal to that, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2, man, how should I write this? x is equal to 4 
minus 3 times y, which is 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. And uh, let's just work this out real quick. This is 4 and then minus 3 minus 3 square root of 5 all over 2. Like that, distribute the 3. Let, let's put it on like this, yeah. And then perhaps get a little common denominator, so this becomes 8, right? So it becomes 8 minus 3, which is 5, and then minus 3 square root of 5 over 2. So another solution. And in fact, if you have the plus minus here, plus minus here, it doesn't matter. So we have the minus and it becomes plus like that. So it's a minus and plus. Yeah. So we got it. We got them all. Yeah. So first, let me just write this down right here for you guys. So first, we will have 1, 1. So these are just the final answers. 1, 1. Okay? Next, we have man, 1, I mean 5, minus 3 square root of 5 over 2, comma 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. And lastly, we have 5 plus 3 square root of 5 over 2, comma 1 minus square root of 5 over 2, like this. So, here are the answers, and I hope I didn't make any mistake. I hope not. Anyway, that's it.